Sunny Bonani, Bantu Base All Souls. Okay, I know most of you don't speak Zulu. And <laughs> but I have been alone for a lot of the time and I have found that while I'm alone, when I talk to myself, I tend to talk to myself in the languages of my youth and found myself thinking a lot about that particular greeting because that's what that was. That is a greeting in Zulu. The word that is said to one person is Saubona, which means we see you. And um, to many people is Sunny Bonani. And so my greeting to you was Sunny Bonani Bantubase All Souls, which means we see you, people of all souls. And I guess I've been thinking about that particularly, the, the wonderfulness of that greeting, because we don't see each other in the way that we normally get to see one another. And so it is a challenge to be connected and to carry on being able to greet each other in that way, saying, Saubona, Sani Bonani, we see you. And it's such an important part of our faith journey to be seen and to see that we are the children of a God who has always assured us that we are seen. If you go back to the very beginning, to the creation stories in Genesis, we have God creating and each day as she completes that creation, we have God looking and saying, God saw that it was good. And so we have this wonderful world that our God made that God put us in to share and to care for. And then if you look in the Exodus story, where when God first calls Moses, God says to Moses, I have seen the suffering of my people. I have seen that my people are oppressed and I have heard their cry. And so again, God assuring the people of Israel through Moses that God has seen their enslavement and God is not simply not moved by their suffering, that God takes in their suffering, takes in their cries and continues to love them and wants them to be free. And in the reading from Ezekiel that Millie preached so wonderfully from this past Sunday, God allows Ezekiel a vision. And it is a vision, I think, of what God sees when God looks at the children of Israel in exile, that God sees that the children have given up life that they are living as though they were dead, as though they were dry bones. And God says to Ezekiel, tell my children that I will put new flesh on them, that I will breathe new life into them, and that they will once again live fully and live in their home, that God sees us in every moment of our lives and God cares about what it is that we are experiencing. So God is seeing us right now, seeing those of us who are fortunate enough to have a safe home to be in, 
seeing those who are struggling to find shelter in this time, seeing those who are working to help those who cannot access shelter, who cannot access the food and the supplies that they need, that God is seeing those who are working to save lives, the doctors and nurses, the techs, the cleaners, all of those in our medical field who are working to cure the sick, who are working to find a vaccine or a cure for this virus, that God is seeing all of those who are continuing to work even though we are in social isolation, God is seeing the women and men and young people who are working in grocery stores so that we can buy the food and the supplies that we need. That God is seeing those working in restaurants who are cooking the meals that we order, that God is seeing those people who are delivering those meals to us. God is seeing the people working on farms so that there is still food in the grocery stores. God is seeing the ways in which our political leaders are trying to ensure that we take care of the most vulnerable. God is seeing us in our struggles to stay healthy. God is seeing us in the ways that we are showing our love for one another by giving to charities, by paying those who would normally be coming to clean our homes even if they cannot come, by sending money to those whom we know don't have access to income at this time, that God is seeing all the ways that we are reaching out and letting one another know that we see each other, even if we don't see each other in the way that we normally do. That all the ways that we reach out and encourage one another are ways of seeing one another. Ways that God calls us to. I think I did tell you about my experiencing a deep depression soon after I moved to London to study um, at LSE and um, and that in response to that depression I did two things I made an appointment with the school psychiatrist and I also reached out to the school chaplain and the school chaplain sat with me and and asked me what is the greatest feeling that you are having in this time? What is the most difficult thing going on for you during this time? And I said, you know, the hardest thing for me right now is that I don't feel the presence of God in my life. I have always felt God's presence in my life in the midst of all kinds of situations in the midst of growing up in apartheid South Africa, in hearing of the suffering of family and friends, in living in fear, in living in a situation of oppression, I had always felt God's presence in my life. And so to find myself in this place where I could not it felt as though God had gone far from me and I could not feel God. And the chaplain said, well, there are two things that we need to be sure about. So the first is that 
you might not feel God. You might feel as though God has left you, but that is far from the truth. God sees you right now. God loves you right now. God is with you in the middle of this experience right now. And also, that feeling that you're having is a very real feeling. And so let's find ways to help you to reconnect with a God who is there, really there. And he encouraged me to attend morning prayer and evening prayer at the chaplaincy so that I could be with people praying and hear those prayers and, and feel those prayers and lifting and empowering me. And he also said, you know, if you can't get to morning prayer, at least do the prayers yourself at home. And he also gave me readings to do, readings like that reading from Exodus to remind me that the children of Israel thought that God had abandoned them, but God saw them and he heard their cries and gave me Psalms to read that Psalms that spoke of God's ever loving presence in our lives. And I did those things and slowly as I read and I prayed, I came to recognize again that feeling of being held, of being God's beloved. But it was a struggle. And so I say to you that in this time, if you feel a distance, know that God is still seeing you and reach out to us, your clergy, to the members of your community who love you and allow us to help you reconnect with that love of God. As I have been here at home, I realized that I was missing seeing your faces. And so the last time I was at my office, I picked up our pictorial directory. And what I've been doing is I've been taking time each day to look at the different pages and the different wonderful faces and to be saying prayers for those faces that I see. And as I was doing that, I realized that not everybody's picture is in the directory. So I ask you that if you didn't take a picture for the directory and you would like me to look at your face when I pray for you, please send me your picture to my All Souls email address. We continue to be seen by God and we can continue to see one another in new and loving ways. To close, I'd like to share one of the Psalms that the chaplain gave me to read. He asked me to read the first part of Psalm 139 and it truly did my soul good. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. 
Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in show, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. Amen.